Last night we were at the, the foundation, the Brian Terry Foundation dinner uh, in memory of the foreign border patrol agent Brian Terry. This morning we're here with Brian's brother Kent. Kent, welcome to Texas GOP Vote. Thank you, Bob. Tell us what that meant to you last night to be there and see these people gathered to honor your brother. Uh, I, I see a lot of respect for Brian and his job and just fellow other agents that showed up uh, that uh, help the support, how supportive people are. I think it was uh, a great great honor and, uh, for them to do that. So. It was a very emotional event, I thought, with the people that were being honored and, and the foundation's work. We talked with your Uncle Ralph about the foundation and, and its work, but um, one of the things that I learned about Brian being here with you this weekend and, and the rest of your family was what a truly exceptional person Brian was. Uh, you know, going through BORTAC training in his late 30s, early 40s, you know, that's not a young man's sport. No, 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 <laughs> especially in this terrain, in this heat. So. Yeah, Tell, there was a, one story, you know, there's a very famous photo of, of Brian carrying this other U.S. Border Patrol agent on his back, and uh, I found that story to be fascinating. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, that's, that story was, um, in, in training, they, their helmets and stuff were labeled, you know, with your last name Terry and stuff like that, or, or Smith or whatever, wherever the other guys in training were. Well, when their helmets fell off, they just grabbed one and they found out uh, this one, this gentleman made a mistake, but he was wearing the Terry helmet. It says with duct tape on the back. And so for Brian's punishment was to carry uh, that agent, the Vortec agent, yeah, around uh, the, the perimeter of their uh, training site. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were both wearing like uh, 40 pounds of gear. And the gentleman that Brian was carrying weighed, uh, I think, 219 pounds plus the 40 pounds. I met him last night. He is no small guy. No, no he's, he's, yeah, <laughs> he's got to be every bit of 6'2", I think. Yeah. But, uh, well, they told Brian his first punishment that he had to carry that agent around three times. And it came out to like just like 1.2 miles, uh, the agent that was on Brian back told me. And he mm -hmm. said about halfway through it, they told Brian that, uh, Brian, stop. You don't have to do it. You know, we found out it wasn't you, blah, blah, blah. And you can set him down. He goes, no, I'll continue. Mm -hmm. But um, you got to understand about Brian. He was the oldest Vortec agent ever to get accepted. And most of these guys are in their 20s. Yeah, right? and, and he's, he's 38 or He 40? was 38 uh, at the time. Yeah. And uh, so, but he got halfway through it. And he said, no, Brian, you can set him down. Well, within the last, uh, I think, uh, 200, 300 yards, Aaron said Brian was kind of struggling. Because it's you know, six inches of sand, the heat, everything. 100. 110 yeah. degrees. And he said, your brother actually had tears running down his face. And he goes, it wasn't sweat. He goes, I actually, because he was a Marine too. Mm -hmm. He got on his back. He says, I actually started getting crying for your brother because he knew he had to prove a point to it. But yeah, he, he finished and uh, set the guy down and that was it. Yeah, William Longinus last night when he was talking about it to the dinner said that, that Brian didn't want to humiliate his instructor who had given that yeah. an improper punishment. And so he went through this huge ordeal uh, sacrifice to himself, basically, to protect the honor of that drill instructor. Yeah. Well, there, there was another story, too, that uh, they were doing a training run. I think it was a six-mile training run. And an agent, they had to carry their pack and their, their, their weapon. He said about uh, half a mile into, a guy had cramps, like like pain in his side. So he set his stuff down. He says, this, he said, all he remembers is this other agent coming by in training, grabbed his bag, threw it on his, continued to the end and then walked over and gave the, the guy his stuff because he couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. And he didn't even know who the guy was until after, you know, he was, who was that gentleman? That was Brian Terry. Mm -hmm. But Brian didn't question anything. He just went, grabbed his stuff and carried it for the guy for, mm -hmm. the, for the rest of the uh, training exercise they were doing. It was interesting when I, when I first started writing about Brian right after he died, uh, I mentioned the BORTAC team, but I, I had no idea the significance of, of what BORTAC really was and for for those of you that aren't familiar with it it's almost like the training like they go through is very like special forces type of training it's, it's they said it's probably you can compare it to uh it's it's intense but not as intense as they say it's like the navy seal training mm -hmm. they pretty much do the same thing but without the water you know mm -hmm. but they said it's pretty much just like the navy seals kind of training mm -hmm. so but uh, yeah it's it's rough so it's like i said i think he said at 43 people in this class i think uh, 18 graduated 20 graduated from the Bortec team. So, 
and him being the old man of the group graduated top of the class. Yes. That, that speaks very, uh, very much to what I've learned about Brian this weekend. Kent, um, this has been a long, painful process for your family trying to get to the truth. What would you like our readers to know about your brother and about where you are and where this is going? Well, I, well I, my brother, he served 20 years of his life to this country. Military, law enforcement, border patrol agent. I mean, he, he took a bullet, and I think he deserves the answers that he took that bullet for, and in, and in respect mm -hmm. that he had for this country, and uh, which he did. He loved this country a lot. And I think our government should have the respect and give him the answers that he deserves. I hope that comes to fruition. We're going to keep working with the people that we know it, that are looking at this and, and try to get to the bottom and, and help you and the rest of your family get the answers that, that you deserve and that Brian richly deserves to have come out. Thank you, Bob. Thank you for your hospitality this weekend. Yeah. I've enjoyed getting to know you, and uh, we'll see you next year at the dedication All of right, that thank statue. You. Thank, thank you. you.